Hi, my name is Diviana and I want to talk about some of the life stages and spawning triggers of blue crabs. Blue crabs go through several distinct life stages, undergoing metamorphosis from tiny larvae to fully developed adults. Their life cycle includes the following stages. First, the egg stage. Female blue crabs carry fertilized eggs in a mass called a sponge, which can contain up to 2 million eggs. Zoya, the larval stage. After hatching, the larvae zoe are planktonic, meaning they drift with ocean currents. This stage lasts 30-50 days, during which they molt several times, gradually developing more crab-like features. They remain in salt water areas near the ocean. Megalopa stage, which is the post-larval stage. And then there is the zoe transition into the megalopa stage resembling tiny crabs with an extended tail. This stage lasts about 620 days and the megalopa actively swims toward estuarine habitats. Once they settle in brackish or low salinity waters, they molt into juvenile crabs. And then finally the juvenile stage. At this stage, blue crabs look like miniature adults and begin their rapid growth phase. They continue molting increasing in size with each molt. Juveniles inhabit estuaries and seek shelter in underwater grasses, oyster reefs and marsh areas. Subadult stage. As they approach maturity, their molting slows down. Female crabs experience a final puberty molt, known as the terminal molt, where they develop a hardened shell. Males continue to grow beyond this stage the male crab continues to molt multiple times. During the adult stage, males and females reach sexual maturity. Males, which are also called jimmies, have a T-shaped apron and continue molting throughout life. And of course, they continue to mate, whatever. Females, which are often called sooks, have a rounded apron and stop molting after their final molt. There is conflicting information hear that females only mate once. Other published papers say that they mate more than once. From what I've seen, I think that it is more than once from watching my own crabs. But I can't prove it. Adult crabs can live up to three years, though many are harvested before reaching their full lifespan. I believe from my own observation that they may live much longer in a controlled environment. I have crabs that are more than three years old which can be proven, of course. I also want to point out to anyone out there, considering to attempt to farm blue crabs, that when you do research, rather it's from papers or studies from 1940 or university studies written last year, they all conflict with each other. So keep an open mind and know that this effort is not overnight and will take time. What I have seen with my own eyes conflicts with half of the studies that I have followed on this subject, which I take as a good thing. Because this effort is not absolute and anything is possible if you find the right conditions. I have enormous hopes that at the level that I'm attempting will be successful. But anyway, let me get back to the basics. Hey, crab life is hard. Getting blue crabs to spawn in captivity is difficult because their natural reproductive cycle is complex and requires very specific conditions. Here's why it's such a challenge. Salinity requirements. Female blue crabs need high salinity water to successfully spawn in captivity, maintaining the right salinity levels and replicating their natural habitat is difficult. In the wild, blue crabs follow a natural migration pattern where females mate in lower salinity waters and then move to higher salinity areas to spawn. Recreating this process in captivity is tricky because it requires controlling their movements and environment at different life stages. Spawning triggers. Blue crabs rely on environmental cues such as water temperature, daylight cycles and tidal movements to spawn. Replicating these natural triggers in captivity is difficult. Larval survival rates. Even if a female successfully spawns, the larvae, called zoea, are extremely delicate. They require precise water conditions, 
the right type of plankton for food and protection from disease. High mortality rates make raising them to adulthood very challenging. Unlike other marine species, blue crab aquaculture has not been widely commercialized due to these difficulties. Most crabs in the seafood market are still caught in the wild because breeding them in captivity is not yet cost effective. All these challenges make it incredibly hard to get blue crabs to spawn and grow in captivity, which is why most blue crab farming focus on growing juveniles from the wild rather than breeding them. But we are continuing to learn an effective way to accomplish this goal, one life stage at a time. Raising blue crabs is hard work because it requires constant attention, careful environmental management, and hands-on labor. Blue crabs need clean, brackish water with the right balance of salinity, temperature, and oxygen levels. Harvesting blue crabs, especially soft-shell crabs, requires frequent checking because they only stay in the soft-shell stage for a short time. Missing the right moment means losing valuable product. High mortality risks Disease, poor water, conditions and stress can lead to high mortality rates, making it a constant challenge to maintain a healthy population. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel at Blue Crab Farming at Home. We truly appreciate your support. We are located in Pennsylvania and we are very excited with our progress so far. We of course wish for faster results, but we are dedicated to make this work. I personally think if we succeed, it could change the entire world view on this type of farming. There is a lot of conflicting information on this subject and we are dedicated to document what we find and publish our results, which we hope would be a blueprint to success. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss our latest content. Your support helps us grow and create more amazing videos for you.